Good morning. Welcome to this time of worship. Welcome to those who might be visiting for the first time or longtime members. We're glad that you are here to worship with us today and join together in this beautiful but a little rainy day, but a good day to gather to worship. Um, first of all, congratulations to the congregation and Pastor Katie for her election last week. Um, very joyous time and um, very happy for you all. But in the meantime, we still have God's work to do for the next few weeks until Pastor Katie arrives. So wanted to call your attention to a lot of announcements in the bulletin, um, a lot of activities uh, that are uh, coming up um, for the congregation and opportunities to share together um, in God's work. Um, just for instance, um, we'll hear a little bit more about Mender Sunday today. Um, that's a, an important mission uh, of the church there. Also, I wanted to point out the Peace and Global Witness offering. Um, there's quite a bit written in the bulletin and there's an insert too, but it's one of those special offerings where um, the church keeps 25% uh, locally to do mission work reconciliation and peace and justice work. So um, just keep that in mind as we, uh, uh, as we take that offering next Sunday. Are there any other announcements? Anyone? Yeah, Laura. Good morning. I'd like to call your attention to the back of the bulletin. Um, the youth group and the Earth Care team are organizing our first annual Earth Care Fair, which will be held after church in two weeks on Sunday, October 1st, out on the lawn. Our fair will feature informational displays, demonstrations, games and crafts for the kids, and an upcycled community art project. Enjoy fellowship from a sustainable table and bring a book to swap. And a pail of eco goods will be raffled off to benefit an eco-justice organization. If you attend, you will even get some swag. <laughs> a reusable grocery bag with a special design printed on the back. I will keep you in suspense. You will have to come that day to see what the design looks like. I hope to see you there. <laughs> Don't tell. <laughs> we're, we're good. We're, we're good at confidentiality. Don't worry about that. Any other announcements anyone would like to share? Then let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship by listening to the ringing of the church bell.
please stand and join me in the call to worship. Listen, the Lord calls out to us, offering life. Turn us to your ways, O God. Walk in the paths of God's commandments with delight. Teach and lead us, O God. With our whole heart, we will turn to you and live. Let us worship God. Our sins weigh us down, and we struggle to live in freedom and joy. When we turn and return, when we turn and return to the God who loves us, God finds it's pleasing. We turn now, confessing our sin against God and nature. Loving God, we confess that we still worship the false gods of the world, forgetting that you are Lord. Loving worldly wealth, we have not loved you with our whole heart, nor loved neighbor as ourselves. We have not shown mercy to others as you have shown mercy to us. Forgive us yet again. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Laying aside the works of darkness, we live in the light of Christ. Gathered in Christ's name, Surely he is among us, full of grace and trust. Hear this good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven, lifted up to new life. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Remain seated for response hymn number 288. Gracious Lord, by the power of your spirit, open your eyes and hearts to your word of love, mercy, 
healing, and blessing through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Sorry, we were supposed to say that together, but you were all thinking in your heads. Okay. Um, next, uh, our first scripture reading is Psalm 1. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. Put their delight, but their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. The wicked are not so, but they are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congrega congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Children, please come forward for the time with the younger kids. So last week, Pastor Katie talked to us about love in action. And she told us that we have to do things in the world with our love to show love and not to keep our love just in our hearts. So when she was saying that last week, it made me think about something we're starting here at the church after church today, and it's a new thing called Mender Sunday. And Mender Sunday is a way for us to show love in the world. It's a chance for you and me and your parents and everybody in this church um, to put love into action. So I don't know if you guys can want to look at this. And do any of those flowers kind of look familiar from what we did in the spring? Yeah? So we planted some zinnia seeds and we planted some these purple angelonia. And so we have these flowers, um, but we also have the help of some other people. So can you guys turn around and thank um, Kathy Brown? She gave us lots of flowers from her home garden, and she has helped me a lot with this Mender Sunday um, in organizing. And then we also have, if you can turn over and give a big wave to Miss Shirley Pearson. She donated all of these glass jars that we're gonna fill. So with their help and your help and the congregation's help, we're going to make these little flower arrangements today upstairs after church in Fellowship Hall um, for our Mender Sunday. And we're going to make these, and we have a little tag that says, enjoy a little sunshine from your friends at Leesburg Presbyterian Church. And we're going to put it all together, and we're going to give them to um, residents or people who live in assisted living homes near our community or near um, Leesburg Presbyterian Church. So we're gonna donate them to Reflections and um, Heritage Hall and Meadow Glen. And those are all places within walking distance of the church that we can give our flowers to. Do you think those residents are gonna like the flowers that we give them? What do you think they're gonna like about it? Notes and stuff. How do you think that might make them feel? happy. Do you think this is showing love in the world? How? Did you have another idea, Katie, of how it's showing love? You just think it's showing love in the world? <coughs> Do you have an idea? No. Yeah, so I can't think, you just said, said it, cheering them up. And today's kind of a gloomy day, and I can't think of a better way to add a little sunshine to your day 
and to someone else's day by having you and you and you and all of you join us upstairs after um, the service and in Fellowship Hall and to start off our week by putting love into action. And if you can't join us today, then I encourage you, just like Pastor Katie encouraged us last week, to find a way to show love in the world this week. So will you guys pray with me? Dear God, thank you for loving each and every one of us. Help us to have love for each other and to build active love and kindness into our everyday lives. Amen. All right. Thank you, Stacy. <clears throat> and thanks to our menders and all those who donated the flowers and everything else. Those are beautiful. So our second reading this morning comes from Mark's Gospel, the middle of uh, kind of long conversation uh, and, and a kind of a group of teaching that Jesus is sharing that some of which we find quite challenging. I'm going to just look at a portion of chapter 10 uh, beginning with verse 17 down to verse 22. So I invite us to listen for God's word for each one of us once again. <clears throat> As he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. And then he said, you know the commandments. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not defraud, honor your father and mother. He said to him, teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, you lack one thing. Go, sell what you own, give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then, come follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Thanks be to God for the reading and hearing of this word to us today. <clears throat> well, these, these days coming up on autumn now, mid-September, often remind me of a very famous poem. I bet it's one that you've heard before. It's a very famous poem about nature uh, by Robert Frost. It goes, two roads diverged in a yellow wood. Sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler, long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Two roads diverged in a wood and I took the one less traveled by and that has made all the difference. A road less traveled by. I think in this passage in Mark, Jesus is once again saying some shocking and surprising things to his hearers, but really thinking about two different paths, two roads, if you will. His words are hard for us to hear sometimes in this time and place. You know, the young man encountering Jesus here, he earnestly wants to know you know, about life in the kingdom of God. And Jesus tells him he's on the right path. All the commandments. The man says he's followed since his youth. Mark's gospel even says Jesus, looking at him, loved him. But the path was about to diverge because Jesus gives him another road to sell what he owns and follow him. 
you know, you and I often look at this passage as, and it's been historically interpreted as just being about the rejection of material goods in a spiritual life, and there is truth in that, but I think we can go deeper than that. The young man is answering Jesus by insisting that, of course, he follows the law, and that is great, says Jesus, but the gospel, we know, is about love, and the gospel is about grace. It's about come and follow me. It's the encounter with Jesus that held a potential to, to change him, truly. You know, we like to say for all of us, our, our journey is unique. You know, for what would Jesus recommend for each of us? For what, you know, what might each of us be lacking? It might be subtle, it might be complex. How can we go into a deeper spirituality of love and grace as Jesus asks us to, to experience that. Well, we look down one road to where it drifts out of sight and wonder, which road should I take? And that's why I love Psalm number one that Kim read for us today. This beautiful image of deep spirituality. The writer uses this imagery of a tree planted by streams of water. And it also refers to two different paths that we can walk down. One is called the road of righteousness, the road of blessing. And the psalmist uses some beautiful poetic images himself when he says, people who walk down this road prosper in spiritual things. He says they become like trees planted by streams of flowing water, trees which blossom, trees whose leaves do not wither. So what kind of spiritual road is it for us? Are we, are we blossoming in our lives and to the world? I'd like to say if we, we might consider the encounter of the young man with Jesus in, in a different way through this unusual imagery in this psalm and keeping in that theme of walking through the woods that Robert Frost loved to write about. Can we think about what are the characteristics of that spiritual tree, if you will, which Psalm 1 talks about? A tree that God wants to grow within each of us in our lives. That is the result of taking the road that God has for us. Well, the first characteristic of that spiritual tree that God wants to grow in our lives is probably that that tree has deep roots. Many uh, Old Testament scholars assume that the psalmist is referring to a tree called a cedar tree in this psalm. The cedar tree happened to be the symbol of my hometown in Mount Lebanon, Pennsylvania. It, it represents strength it represents beauty. In the Middle Eastern climate, as I understand, often warm and dry, the cedar tree is known for deep and tenacious roots which go through the sand and the shallow soil all the way down to the subterranean streams. And they find boulders all under that to wrap their roots around. A question that each of us has in our spiritual lives are, do we have deep roots? One of my favorite professors in uh, Pittsburgh Seminary, <clears throat> Dr. Andrew Purvis, would always be, he'd always be reading in his office and he would say at home he has this special room up, up in his attic where he goes, hides himself to do more reading and We'd ask him, you know, about some TV show or some football game or something that was on the day before, and he'd say, oh, I didn't see that. I, I was up late reading. So the students used to kid him, say, why, why do you do so much studying? You're already a professor. Do you need to do more of that? And Andrew told us something I always remember. He said, I want my students drinking from a running brook, not a stagnant pond. 
no matter my age or your age, are, are we a running brook getting fresh grace and love every day? Because when the adversity of life comes along, as surely it will and has, do we have the kind of deep roots that we need? One way to know that is to ask, are you into what you might call spiritual disciplines? Are you into study and prayer and worship on a regular basis, things that help us to grow deep roots? You're into the wellspring of God's love and grace, if you are. So deep roots. So the second characteristic of the kind of tree God wants to grow in us is that it bears great fruit. The Bible uses this image in so many places. It's a wonderful image, an image that I, I couldn't get out of my head from our, because of our house on the west coast of Florida. We thought it would be fun to plant some fruit trees. Our favorite was called a Meyer lemon tree. And I was talking to one of our, one of the members of a church of this, about this the other week. These Meyer lemons were delicious. They, they were absolutely beautiful. The only trouble was things grow fast in Florida. And it got so big that after a few years, it started producing 300 lemons all at the same time. <laughs> do you know what to do with 300 lemons? We used to put them out on the curb in baskets and just pray the mailman would take them or some, something would happen. But that image of a tree that bears that kind of fruit, what does that mean in the New Testament? Well, in Galatians, Paul talks about, of course, the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, things you would want in that kind of abundance. But, but here's what we remember. Too. We, we can't do that all on our own power. It's a gift of grace. It's a gift of God's love and grace. That kind of blessed life that the psalmist talks about, produced by God growing a spiritual life in us and through us. Another example of um, the abundance of the fruit of the Spirit, was when we lived in Sarasota, there was a, uh, a very large little league complex um, not too far from us. And it was named for this guy named Buck O'Neill, whom I had never heard of. But I soon found out he was a baseball player in his own right. He, he broke the color barrier as, uh, in the uh, major leagues as a coach for the Chicago Cubs. And he bore much of the fruit of the spirit in his own life. That, field, I found out, was part of a, a large celery farm where Buck's ancestors were enslaved. And as a youngster, he even worked those fields himself. At, at age 91, just a few years ago, Buck told the story of his grandfather being enslaved by a man named Mr. O'Neill. But Buck said neither he nor his grandfather ever hated Mr. O'Neill. He said, you can hate slavery. He said, you can hate injustice. You can hate cancer. You can hate disease. But Buck O'Neill said, you should never hate another person. That was his secret, he said, <laughs> to living to be 91 years old. He said, God made man and woman. So he said, so I, I could never hate another person. The Holy Spirit was bearing great fruit within him despite the adversity that he experienced. God wants the same for us, I believe, as well. So the third characteristic of that kind of tree is that we have leaves that do not wither. Do you know that, that poet, Robert Frost, the famous poet of New England. I found out he was actually born in San Francisco. He might never have become the beloved poet of New England 
except for a dying request by, from his father to be buried in his native Massachusetts. So the family took this grueling trip across the country in 1885, can you imagine what that was like, to honor his father's wishes. It was so exhausting and expensive, they could not afford to return to San Francisco. So he suddenly became a New Englander. And as a New Englander, he tried several paths. He dropped out of college after one semester. He tried poultry farming in New Hampshire. And he failed to make enough to keep the farm going. But in the face of that failure, financial ruin, he did not wither. Instead, he decided to pursue his dream of becoming a poet. Something God was calling him to do, he felt. He took a risky path, but one that he famously said made all the difference. His very famous poem would later attest to that, a less traveled path. In the face of difficulty, failure, or worse, can we have leaves that do not wither under adversity? Well, where might God want to send us into the world to blossom, to bear fruit? Which road will we take? You know, in the Bible, that cedar of Lebanon is known as the king of trees a tree planted by streams of water which yield their fruit in its season and their leaves do not wither. May it be so for all of us. Thanks be to God. Amen. I'd like to invite you to stand and join together as we affirm our faith this is a piece of a, a very long uh, confession called the Confession of 1967 from the Presbyterian Church Book of Confessions. Let us share, share it together. God's sovereign love is a mystery beyond the reach of human's mind. Human thought ascribes to God superlatives of power, wisdom, and goodness. But God reveals his love in Jesus Christ by showing power in the form of a servant, wisdom in the folly of the cross, and goodness in receiving sinful people, the power of God's love in Christ to transform the world discloses that the Redeemer is the Lord and Creator who made all things to serve the purpose of his love. Our hymn is number 291, Spirit, Spirit of Gentleness.
Let us give to God as abundantly as God has given to us.
Please join me in the prayer of dedication. Almighty God, receive these gifts that we offer with grateful hearts and use our lives for the ministry of your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. We have an opportunity to gather together as a church to lift up in prayer those joys and concerns that are on our hearts this morning, some which remain silent on our hearts. Are there joys and concerns you would like to share today? Anybody? Anybody? Yeah. <clears throat> Mary Beth. Okay, thank you. And yes, Dave. Toots, okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dave. Toots, <clears throat> yeah, Laura. Pray, prayers, prayers for your mom. Thank you. And her test. Okay, thanks. Then let us come together as a community of faith in a time of prayer. Gracious and loving God, we know that you stand at the door of our hearts this morning once again and knock. There are things that do crowd our spiritual houses at times that it makes it difficult to open the door or to see you standing there. Yet you promise that if we would seek your rule in our lives, we would be able to unclutter our thoughts, to release anxiety and fear and despair and fill our spirits with the joy that comes from following you in our daily lives. So today we ask, seek, and knock. We ask for your blessings as we go about our daily routines. We know that we have many opportunities to, to be your servants in the world. And we ask for the strength to take the risks to be your witness wherever we are sometimes on a road that is less traveled by. We seek to truly find your meaning for our lives. We seek your kingdom right here where we are. Give us a glimpse of where you would have us go and who you would have us be. And we knock at the door knowing you will open it for us to give us strength, to give us understanding and illumination, to handle whatever comes our way. So especially today, we ask that you send your healing spirit to those who are sick or recovering from illness or receiving uh, medical news that was unwelcome or awaiting a test. Especially we lift up Mary Beth and, and Laura's mom and Toots and many others that perhaps remain silent on our hearts this morning. And we are thankful, O oh God, for answered prayer, for improved health, for the many prayers raised which have strengthened us and have given us a spiritual blessing. But we ask all of these things together, knowing that indeed you answer when we ask, seek, and knock. And so we ask these things in Christ's name who asks us to pray together as a church, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever.
Our hymn is number 724, O Jesus, I Have Promised. And now, friends, let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit go forth with us all, both now and forevermore.